Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Long. With me is always my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, gunner, navigator, orator, and podcasting associate, Jacob Gloth. How you doing today, Jacob? I am One swell, day. Charles. I am very swell on this, swell. this solid May afternoon. It's not afternoon. It's May Day. Me, at least, actually, now that I think about it, it's just before noon. It, it is well and truly afternoon for me. That's, that's for me. <clears throat> I'm happy for you. It is 4.15 in the day. Well, this is... I'm going to get barbecue after I, this. Okay. I'm very That's excited. good. Good, good for you. I'm sure it's not good barbecue because you're not in America where we have the greatest of barbecue. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will not deny that America does have the best barbecue, but I am cautiously optimistic about this barbecue. Okay. So, we'll That's see. Good. That's good. Well, I wouldn't be cautiously optimistic about this pitch because it's... Amazing. You don't have to be cautious. I was gonna say, I don't my <laughs> optimism does not need to be cautious mm-hmm. here. Because it's it's I yeah. am I am recklessly optimistic about this about this television show that you're going to pitch for us mm-hmm. today. Well, I already told you that I'm not totally sold on my title options here. Um mm-hmm. I was trying to think of something, couldn't quite get it. So the options are um on my list here are resistance is futile, uh-huh. exporting the revolution, okay. or okay. okay, revolution number nine, which is just a Beatles song. But um, we could do a different number, I guess. Uh, but we like the yeah. Beatles. Yeah. Um, so the short summary um, of this idea is it's a... Wait, 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 wait. I want to okay. guess. Can okay. I guess? Yeah. Is that allowed? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it's a space show, right? Um, about a corporation, probably, like, some morally ambiguous to, like, evil company that, like, ships out revolutionaries, and that's going to be our, our team is going to be, like, a team of revolutionaries that get shipped out to various different conflicts throughout the galaxy, right? And, and utilizes their extreme technology and skills to aid these revolutionaries in order to further their evil company masters like you know goals and 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 and, uh you know pad their 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 bottom line am i anywhere near charlie the pitch at all i I mean you should pat yourself on the back here because you are exactly wrong and you should write that idea down because it's a good one um (laughs) this is not a space show it is a mockumentary following a guerrilla rebellion against a totalitarian state on a a very small remote island okay that is that is much more grounded than my show idea so it's set in like the 90s early 2000s it's an island nation that i've made up um with one city called akatov a-k-a-t-o-v um, which is just a merging of the Japanese and Russian language for the, uh, the, the, the name because it's a small island between Russia and Japan. Um, okay. So, like, you know, out in the middle of absolute nowhere. Um, and both sides, mm-hmm. Russia and Japan, both forgot it existed after World War II, and so now the island is independent yeah. because no one knows it really exists. Mm-hmm. It got lost in the inner uh, intercontinental shuffle. Mm-hmm. That, that the world did after World War II, if you remember. I know you were yeah. there. It's it, You know, it, it's such a small, Fun. unimportant island that no one really cares. I mean, like, does yeah. anyone in Russia even live on that side of Russia? Probably not, right? Yeah. Um, it's probably no. like six people uh, in a go- hut. Bears. It's probably a couple of bears, yeah. yeah. And Japan, mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, they care about some island way up north near Russia. Probably not. They were very busy. If, I, if memory serves, yeah. right, now I watched a film uh, by the name of Oppenheimer. And if memory serves from that film, the Japanese were quite busy at the end of World War II. Yeah. If I were to, if, if, if I'm remembering correctly, they had other stuff to deal with. Uh, like, yeah, yeah of course. Anime. Anime, yes. And, and such. Uh, what else do they make? What else? Cars. Motorcycles. God, ca- cars. Godzilla. Godzilla. Uh, Pokemon cards. Gotta make those Pokemon they cards. Were ve- they were very busy with Pokemon cards. F- uh, Nokia, Samsung. Like, they're busy. Mm-hmm. Samsung, Japanese, or Korean? I have no idea. Uh, let's just say it's it's Japanese, so I don't sound racist. Yeah. Um, 
to this un unimportant island. Yes. Okay. So, um, our main characters. First off, we have uh, Xavier Martinez. He's the charismatic mm -hmm. uh, South American leader of this group. Uh, they're the, called the Young Akas. Okay. Akas being like Akatov is the name of the city. Young Akas. Um, he's mm -hmm. played by. Acolytes. Guess who's played by? Okay, okay, take take three guesses. Take th say three names for me. <sighs> So, he's South American, right? That's what you just said. I'm gonna go... Timothy Chalamet, Adam Driver, Steve Buscemi. Those are my three guesses Completely for the South American wrong. Uh, revolutionary. Wait, did you say Timothy Chalamet for the South American <laughs> revolutionary? Yeah. He's very Adam South American. Driver. Who was the last like one he said? Buscemi. Buscemi. None of these, okay. Steve of these Buscemi. Um, I thought you'd get it. Pedro Pascal is our charismatic, fun, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, South American revolutionary. Basically, Xavier Martinez, oh, yeah. um, he's from, uh, well, I, I, you know, I'll explain that in the pilot, but um, he's a he's former military. Um, he didn't get very far in the military, so it's not like he was like a captain or something, and then he like moved over yeah. here this is guy that is like a private for like he maybe got through boot camp and like mm -hmm. he's a fucking grunt did he you know he he says he's in the military but he really didn't get that far um next mm -hmm. we have victor salieri salieri um he's italian slash like russian uh obviously as you can tell mm -hmm. by his first and last names um he's the demolition victor guy salieri. um oh you gotta have a demo guy mm -hmm. on all ragtag teams and uh he has Demolition. Breathed in far too many toxic chemicals, so he's a little bit insane. He talks to himself a lot. Um, yeah. And he's been part of basically every gorilla group on the island. He's prone to forgetting which one he's a part of now. So he'll, like, say the long, long slogans and forget, like, what their cause is again. Um, yeah. Okay. I love that. Um, I'm thinking maybe each episode he has a different color teeth. Right? Like, first episode, he's got yellow teeth. Second episode, he's got, like, lime green teeth. Third episode, he's got, like, crimson red teeth because of all the chemicals he's putting Oh, yeah, in. yeah. They're just dying his enamel. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe he's, like, partially doing it on purpose because he's getting, like, the colors of, like, the revolutionary group, but he keeps doing the wrong one. Uh, yeah, exactly. I like that. Oh, that's great. Uh, next, we have Midori Ito. Uh, she's the gung-ho, super-passionate revolutionary. Um, with manifestos and robust ideas about the new government that are way overly complicated. Mm -hmm. um, basically, to sum her up, she's... Yeah. You, you saw Monty Python and the Holy Grail, correct? I... No. no. You haven't? Monty who? Yeah, of course you have. There's a snake in this Monty, and then there's a cup. Anyway, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There's a scene where there's a peasant who's, like, in the mud, who's played by Michael Palin. And yeah. he has all these high flutin' ideas about the... You know, anarcho syndicalist commune. Representative democracy. And all this kind of stuff, but he's a peasant picking dirt in the field. That's basically what she yeah. is. So she has, she'll go off on okay. these like huge rants like him um, about like, you know, what they should be doing and what they, you know, what they're, um, how, they're how they should mm -hmm. be set up and all this stuff. And everyone's like, okay, all right, come on, shut all up. All right, cool. Cool your jets. Spell the word democracy. And she just, she can't. She has no idea how to spell it. Um, and she's super up. She's like super, uh, you know, she's super up for revolution and in a brutal fashion. Like she's constantly like, we just got to, you know, yeah, more so than e the other people. Like, you know, uh, Xavier Martinez, uh, he, he wants to, you know, he wants to take over, right? He wants, you know, stop, you know, take over the state. But uh, he doesn't mm -hmm. want to like dismantle everything. Midori Ito is like, we should take the entire upper class, line them against the wall and shoot them. Yeah. Uh, shoot all of them you know she's take all their houses burn them yep. down start from scratch she wants to Unibom burn everything style. and she wants everyone to like live in the dirt as one essentially <laughs> that's like her idea yeah that things should okay be. um next we have hikaru we'll be the grubs hikaru sato who we're just gonna call hick because mm -hmm. he's basically the japanese equivalent hick. of a hillbilly um mm -hmm. he's a gun nut hates city folk um Mm -hmm. He has a really Mullet. thick accent that no one can understand. Not even Midori, who's also mm -hmm. Japanese. Um, what kind of an accent are we going for? Are we going for, like, somebody who speaks Japanese fluently, but they also have a very thick Southern American accent? Because I think that'd be very funny. That would funny. be funny. 
So I've never heard we them do that yeah. ever in my entire life. Yeah. yeah, and we'll just explain that as like, oh yeah, we this is it. what really, like, uh, really, really, really rural, rural Japanese, Japanese people, people. Yeah, sound like. Um, he, we can also say he's a big fan of the Dukes of Hazard, and he's driving around that car that has the Confederate flag on the on the on the top of it. Like he's just a he's a a bit of a, a redneck, mm-hmm. classical redneck, jean shorts, mullet. Mm-hmm. Um, do the Japanese wear the the hats, the rice uh, paddy field hats? You know what I'm talking about? I don't think so. I th- is that just a Chinese thing? I wasn't sure. I don't think that's really. Do- I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Ah, uh, we're maybe another we're not character. The Mila, Mila Volkov. Yeah. She's uh, Russian, obviously by her name. Uh, she's mm-hmm. the second in command. She's more of the brains of the operation, but she's not really a people yeah. ple- person, um, and she's a huge complainer. Constantly complaining about every little thing, about you know how they're doing things, what yeah. they're doing, why they're doing it. Um, because she lacks motivation and is really lazy. So, we've okay, got quite... But she's the brain. Yeah, she's the smartest uh-huh. person here. Xavier Martinez, he's very yeah. charismatic and uppity and all that kind of stuff. But he's not the smartest tool in the shit when it comes to planning. He's Maybe not, like, bad. Each... It's just that he's not clever Yeah, he's not clever stupid, at all. but he's not... Yeah. Maybe he's constantly pitching uh, T-shirt ideas because he—he's obviously like a Che Guevara like style character. That's how he's, yeah. you know, uh, uh, advertising himself as. So maybe each episode or every few episodes, he's got a new T-shirt idea, and it's just a riff on some like historical poster that everyone loves, you know. So he could have first episode, he's doing the Che Guevara thing. People are like, that's a little bit, uh, you know. Think of this cease and desist. Uh, you're kind of stealing. Exactly. <laughs> and then uh, the next one <laughs> is uh, the Hope poster with Obama from 2008, but it's him and he's like, resistance is futile. Yeah. That would be funny. That's good. If that was the show. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know any other posters because I, I don't pay attention so to the world. So those are our central characters. And our final yeah. one is Phil. He's mid twenties, average American. He's uh-huh. filming a documentary about their war effort to take down the Akatov state. Yes, he's uh, very sarcastic right. and not, not not very sarcastic, just sarcastic. And he's mildly disappointed with their organization. So he's, you know, he's like, you know, somewhat excited in the beginning about being the filmmaker for this, you know, this yeah. crazy guerrilla group. You know, it's like this, it's this Mm -hmm. incredible, like, sort of war journalism sort of thing. But, uh, they're, they're kind of a joke and he's, he's getting the feel of that as it goes on. Yeah. Maybe it's like a, because I was going to ask, what's the vibe of the filmmaker? Cause it was, you could have done two routes and you've kind of done both, which I think is very funny, which is either the revolutionaries are making the film to make themselves look better and they're just failing so miserably kind of borat style or uh like they've got a third party you know film group in uh, who are like they have their own agenda kind of yeah. cannibal holocaust style but you're kind of mixing it together so it's a little bit um uh what we do in the shadows that's what i think this this you know setup reminds me the most of mm-hmm. Because at the beginning, the documentarians in What We Do in the Shadows, they're kind of like, ooh, this is so cool and edgy and dark because they're vampires and they kill people, all this stuff. And then slowly but surely throughout the film, they realize just how stupid and incompetent and ridiculous all the vampires are. And they're just like, this is fucking stupid. But we've invested this much time and money. We have to keep filming. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, Which I like a lot. All right. Give us the plot. Give us the the rundown. So, we open up episode one with Phil filming Xavier, showing off the camp and talking about you know the young Akas, their their mission, um, and how they want mm-hmm. to take down the state. So Xavier explains in this intro that he is a South American revolutionary who couldn't get a revolution started in Uruguay, so yeah, he's he moved here. Basically, he like joined the army in, in Uruguay and like was trying to like sort of start a coup there and it it's it things weren't moving yeah. there was nothing happening they're like okay but everybody 
everybody was happy with their like dental plan and like healthcare and all this yeah. stuff and they're like why would we want to throw all you in charge dude i saw you struggling for 15 minutes on a crossword puzzle yesterday because you couldn't remember the word like rope or something like something ridiculous mm. he had all these high ideas about like he would join the army very quickly yeah. become like the head honcho and then you know mm -hmm. help take over the state um but that just just did not work from the get-go um yeah he was the latrine digger for the uh you know platoon or whatever so he came here because it was easier um and their camp is on the edge of the city just down the road from a gas station uh but they set up a bunch of fake palm trees to sort of hide it like a jungle <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was going to say, is there a Wile E. Coyote style, like, painted uh, <laughs> painted uh, background that they put mm -hmm. up? And um, the main guy just walks into it constantly thinking it's more forest because he is just not a, he's not a bright, he's not a bright man. Because mm -hmm. he, he's from South America, so he's thinking, like, in his head, he's like, all the best revolutionaries, like, they hung out in the jungle. So we got to be in the jungle. Mm -hmm. So he's got all these jungle trees. I said palm trees, but, you know, whatever jungle trees palm trees are jungle, jungle trees, trees whatever um you know whatever whatever trees are in the jungle um and uh you know they're 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 there they're you know he's, he's showing it maybe in the beginning of the shot it's like seems like they're actually in a jungle and as we go around we start to realize yeah. that like these everything's fake around here this is all just a joke mm -hmm. um and uh they introduce victor who's huffing gasoline um and starts rambling on and talking about the means of production and how they, you know, and Xavier stops him and tells him, like, that's what the, uh, you know, that's the Aka Communist Front. Come on, you're supposed to talk about us. Um, and as soon as he says the Aka, oh, Aka yeah, Communist but... Front, everyone promptly yells, traitors! Because um, yeah, we'll get this to the theme, but there's a lot of other uh, groups, a lot of other uh, like yeah. revolutionary groups. Um, and so mm -hmm. they're and they all Every, they're all they're sort of split from each other. So they all see each other as traitors mm -hmm. and, and splitters. Um, so Midori is next. Um, oh, that. Oh, what did you say? Sorry, I was just gonna say that leads us to a perfect opportunity to do one of my favorite tropes in TV and movies, which is our group of characters running into the exact same characters, just slightly different from another group. So we can have another American doing another documentary film about a different revolutionary group on the island, and he's just as disappointed. You know, yeah. I love that. I always love we that. We could do that Shaun in of the episode Dead, I think, two, does it where we have like a sort of conference with all of the different groups. Ooh. So that, that could definitely happen there. Um, uh, Midori, she falls into a Monty Python-esque rant about the anarcho-syndicist anarcho, uh, commune and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, they take it down the state and all this kind of stuff, and everyone's kind of ignoring her. Um, yeah, Hick immediately, as soon as he sees the camera, shoves a gun in its in the you know right up against the lens and knocks down Phil. Mm -hmm. And uh, Savior has to like tell him off and apologizes. Uh, like, oh, sorry, you know, yeah, Hick, he isn't, you know, he's not all there. You know, he's not uh, all there. He's, sometimes he's a good kid. Yeah. Um, uh, then they get to Mila, who is completely given up and is walking away. So she's completely. At, like in the first episode our first seeing of her is her giving up on the cause and walking away from the camp and Xavier has to yeah. like chase her as she's running out and try to convince her to you know come back and as yeah. this is happening and we of course we do the obligatory shot like our, our guy uh, is in the bushes Phil's in the bushes and he's like you know taping them have the conversation like, even though he's not supposed to be it's a whole thing yeah. we love that and he's like we love absolutely that in mock mock offering to do anything at all <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, to t I'll, well, I'll increase your wages. <laughs> you don't pay me. When we kill all the the people, you can have the house. You can have the presidential mansion. Please, just stay. I need someone to, to auto. I need someone to check my spelling on my speeches. I get very confused. Uh, next, uh, so at the very end of this, I like you know after he's done begging, we'll pan over to mm -hmm. uh, Victor, who asks Phil if he wants a whiff of the gasoline. And he's like. Yeah, you know what? Sure. And the camera turns off. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, by the way, everything we see in this show is going to be from the camera's point of view. Um, I was hoping so. I, I don't love those faux mockumentaries where they do part of it in mockumentary style and then the rest is just like regular ass cameras. Yeah. I don't love that. 
uh, a lot of the time, unless it works, you know, mm-hmm. for the themes. Yeah, like all from the. But most of the time, just give me all the characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah. what's it called? Um, we probably will not see Phil's face ever. He's just, he's just the un. Okay. You just hear his voice, and he he's just the camera guy essentially. So no no. So he's played by you, right? Uh, Presumably. No. <laughs> Played by a, a real yeah, actor you. who can go out there and stand with the camera. <laughs> I don't want to do, do that. It. You, know? you want to do that? That's gonna be a lot of work, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be a, you know, get me out I'll, there. It's gonna be I'll heavy. put in the work. It's gonna be a whole thing. I'll put in the hours. Honestly, we'll we probably just hungry, ADR the voice over for the actor, the voice actor, whoever does yeah. it, and we'll have an actual cameraman there. Um, sure. Anyway. Uh, camera turns Charlie back on, voice. and they're just outside a military mm-hmm. checkpoint with a big, with you know, big, tall concrete walls. Um, and Xavier are approaching. A, Xavier and Phil are approaching their car. Xavier's in the driver's seat. Phil's in the passenger seat. Um, they pull up to the checkpoint, and a guard comes over and starts speaking in Russian. Victor nods at Phil, who's just like, "What? What do you mean? What, what are you nodding for? What, what's what's going on?" Xavier's like, "Tell tell him to answer them." He's like, "What do you mean? I, I don't speak Russian." Xavier's like. Oh shit! Oh, that's that's why we brought you. Okay. Um, they both look at the guard, and the guard sees that they don't understand him. So the guard switches to Japanese, and Xavier then looks back at Phil. And Zay- Phil's like, oh, Phil. I don't speak Japanese. He's like, got it. What do you what do you want me to do? He's like, oh shit. Phil's like, wait, you don't speak Russian or Japanese, and that's the government you're trying to take over. Like those are the two languages. He's like, nah, I just speak Spanish and English. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know any oh Japanese. What the fuck you think I, I grew up in fucking Uruguay? I don't. I, what, do you, what do you want from me? Yeah, Mila's rubbing her head in the background, just like. Oh, well, she's not in the car. It's just them two, as we can see in the car. No. Oh, okay. Um, so neither of them can speak English or uh, or Japanese or Russian. Um, and the guard can't speak English or Spanish. Um, so they're all confused, and the guard's getting a little angry. And a voice from the trunk yells uh, that the guard's looking for their papers. And Xavier's like, oh, shit, the papers. Okay, Phil, hand him the papers. Um, and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't have the papers. He's like, you don't have the papers? Oh, shit, okay. Where did I put the papers? Hmm. And he's like, he starts looking through his bag, and the guard's getting angry and upset. And uh, he's also looking back mm-hmm. in the trunk now because he heard a voice yell from the trunk. Um, and Xavier's like looking <laughs> through his bag. He's like, I can't find it. He's like, you can't find the papers? No, I can't find my gun. Do you have your gun? Shoot him. And he's like, I don't have a, Phil's like, I don't, I don't have a gun. What, what do you mean? I don't have, I, he's like, oh, shit, okay. Um, what did you bring? The camera, dude. That's all I brought. The camera and the microphone. That's what I'm here for. I don't have any other skills. Now Xavier's like looking through the car. He's like opening up the glug box, like reaching over with Phil, like trying to find, he's like, I, I know I brought my gun somewhere. It's got to be somewhere. And as he like, as he finally realizes where his gun in is, the guard has walked to the back of the car and popped open the trunk. Um, and that's mm-hmm. when the guard gets shot in the head. And, and obviously yeah. in that moment, that is when Xavier is like, oh shit, it's in the trunk. And at, at that, oh, I left it's in, it the, in trunk. the trunk. As he says the word trunk, that's when the bullet fucking hits the uh, the guard's head. And uh, yeah, Victor is the one that just blew the guard's head off. And he climbs out of the trunk, now covered in blood, and sits in the back seat just casually. And they pull the car forward yeah. uh, out of the checkpoint. And they head into town. Um Still on the edge of the city, uh, like sort of like like a I don't know sort of townish area, you know, not tall buildings on the uh, not not in like you know the big high rises of the city. And there they go into a small, like they're they're in a parking lot near a small depot, um, and they meet Midori, who scouted out a uh, which she says is a small weapons cache. Xavier's all excited. He claps her on the back and tells everyone to get out of the car except for Phil. Um, Phil thinks like, okay, they're gonna do something, and I, sh- I should just set up the camera on the dash here, and I'll, you know, I'll just film whatever they do at the depot. I don't want to get too close because it'll be dangerous. Uh, that's probably why he mm-hmm. here told me to stay in the car. Um, and as he's sitting in the car, Xavier calls him frantically and is like, "Drive, drive!" He's like, "What do you mean drive? Just drive to the depot now." And Phil's like, oh, I, "What? Why?" And he's like, "Just do it, just do it." And then um, as he crashes through the gates. Phil, you know, he's, he's hit the gas pedal. He's speeding the car towards the depot. Uh, Xavier quickly tells him, bail, bail, bail. And Phil's like, why? Why do I need to bail? What's going on? And Xavier says, the car, it's going to blow. And so, and then Phil looks to the side, and the car is rigged with explosives in the back seat. So when, um, mm-hmm. That's when what Victor, Victor was had, doing yeah, in when the he got seat. in the back seat, he was rigging the car. And Phil jumps out of the car with the camera and films a massive explosion if the car hits the depot. 
Um, and Xavier appears well, from behind I, cover. I think it would be better. What would he say? I think it would be better if the massive explosion is just out of view. So we see, like, limbs flying and wood splintering and stuff and a bit of a fireball on the, like, right-hand side of the screen. But we don't see this massive, oh, awesome so it's explosion. It's right in front of him, but, like, the camera, he hasn't picked it up yet. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll just see, like, the fire and, like, a limb will just flop in front of the camera. <laughs> exactly. That'd be great. I like Perfect. That um so xavier appears from behind cover and tells him ah he's like yeah great job phil phil is obviously upset um uh, but no one seems to give a shit mm -hmm. um and as they're all clapping each other on the back and ex you know excited that they you know successfully destroyed the weapons depot um xavier turns around he's like I, you know i kind of thought it'd be a bigger explosion you know all that gunpowder and stuff and then it starts raining book pages and Xavier's like, what the what the fuck is this? And he looks at Midori and she's like, well, you know, web, you know, books are the weapons of the mind. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh yeah. my fucking God. We just destroyed a bunch of fucking books in a storage place. A public library. Yeah. <laughs> this is like absolutely nothing. And, and, it's, and maybe there's a sign in the corner that says like slated to be burned or something like that. And they were going to burn the books anyway because they're a totalitarian They did government. nothing, yeah. They did absolutely, completely nothing in this whole mission. Just a complete failure. That's kind of the, the idea behind nothing. this show is that a lot of these missions yeah. are just complete and utter failures. Um, episode two is the meeting of the rebellions where everyone, you know, is constantly. We might do this like later, but uh, I just put it down as episode two. Mm -hmm. This is where like all the rebellions get to, uh, together for a conference. They have like one a year where they, you know, try to discuss their differences and come together and it never works out. Um, and they're all yelling traitor and splitters at each other. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's like there's enough people oh, there the if you look at it to be like a very serious strong rebellion to take on the state, but there's so many small yeah. groups and and split up by so many small ideas like, you know like, Victor's mm -hmm. group is basically identical or uh, sorry Victor uh, Xavier's group is basically identical to another group except the other group thinks that uh, they should be bidets stalled in every toilet and, and Xavier is is, exactly. a, or like, is a strong toilet paper man. You know, he's against bidets. He's a toilet paper believer. Mm. I would love it if these, like, because obviously they're super petty and ridiculous. And so I think it would be really funny is if, like, the first time they meet, right, they all see that, like, um, uh, he's got a camera. Like, there's a, uh, somebody filming them. And then the next time they meet, everybody has a camera crew. Like, every single revolutionary is like, well, oh, we're going to make a documentary. If you're making a documentary, we'll, we'll be better with our documentary. And it's a very obviously, like, Javier is just standing behind somebody with a camera. And he's like, I don't know how to. I'm not even sure it's on yet. Like, I've never used a camera like this before. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. Just hold it. It just looks good. Just it, we, We're trying to look good. He changed his name there to just Javier. So I guess he, I guess so he could be Javier. That'd be better, I guess. I usually pick Xavier, but Javier's no, I was, good. I was, I was just picking a random name, and somebody, it, like another member of a oh, random uh, sorry, uh, group, understood. was named gotcha. Javier. But we, yeah, well, that would be funny if there's an Xavier, you know. a Xavier and a Javier. Um, yeah, I, well, I was imagining a lot of these revolutionary groups were, uh, like led or had members who were South American. Yeah. Like, that's just kind of how the revolutionary pipeline goes. You get military training in South America. You go fight some wars in um, in Africa, in the Congo, right? Those those Congo wars. And then you go to this island and you're a revolutionary. And so there's just like a dozen dudes who all are just South American revolutionaries trying to be the next Che Guevara. Mm -hmm. And none of them are successful because they're all idiots. Um, so in this episode... Um Victor is going to accidentally rejoin the wrong crew and start doing, like, really serious and extremely brutal terrorist missions on this totalitarian mm -hmm. state where he kidnaps the children of an oligarch and all this crap. Oh, um, my lord. He's, like, fitting people with bo with explosive suicide vests. They're like, no, see, it's just that you need a little, like, he, like he's a tailor. You need a little bit more out here. See, it's, it's, it's... You need the two finger rule, right? I could barely get one finger in there. So I'm gonna take this out a little bit and then 
Come back tomorrow. I'll have it fitted perfectly. Oh, that could be a great scene where he like yeah, comes course. into the room as he's like seeing a child being fitted with a suicide vest, and he's like outraged. And and you know the audience, they all think like, oh, okay, this is his breaking point where he's gonna be like, no, we shouldn't do this. Mm-hmm. He's like, you, I mean, the wires, they're terrible. I mean, where, where is the? Oh my God, the, you know, there's there's no cable the control here. I mean, it's just a complete mess. You got wires going everywhere. I mean, oh my God, I I can't even look at you. I can't even look at you. And he, like, Ugh. has to sort through him and fix it. He's like, that is how you said it. Look, I mean, now this little girl, she can't get out. She's going to blow up. It's going to be fine. Jeez. I mean, if you did have done it your way, they could have just shot this right here, and the girl would have got out got out fine. Jeez. She would have been totally fine. Really? Now we gotta, yeah, you would have been fine, been but now you're going to die. Now you're fucking dead. And she just starts crying. He's like, ah, oh, don't. Have a good day. Here's a lollipop. I put the I put the arming device inside the lollipop. It's going to blow any second now. <laughs> run um meanwhile during this uh xavier is going to spend the majority of time trying to win over fresh recruits with his charisma and charm very much like a car salesman Mm. um yeah mila is going to leave the team and try to start her own but everyone turns out to be really hard to recruit um when you hate everyone so she's like gonna just Mm -hmm. shoot down everyone that comes up to her little table that she's set up like she just does up a table like she's a like a college club trying to recruit members, at a job. you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, at a job fair. Yeah, at a, like a, at a job fair. And, and and people come up to her table to join, and like good people too, but she just hates them. She's like, you you know, you chew your hair. I don't want that. That's going to mess up everything. Yeah. Ugh, That's gross. You, your eyes, you know. I don't let people with green eyes join. Yeah, lazy yeah. eye. Who wants that? Get out of here. Um, and eventually Xavier with one leg is going to come up to her thing. And uh, it's going to be like, he agrees to join her, but essentially she re- agrees to join him is really what it is. It, he sort of finagles yeah. it like that. Um, Midori starts... You'll jo- I'll join yours. Yeah. I'll join your revolutionary group, but I have one condition. What's that? We have to use all of my equipment, my men, and my base. You know what? Deal. Yeah. They shake on it. And then she like... Fucking sucker! I got him. I didn't even have any of those things. <laughs> and then she gets back and, and kind of realizes, like, hmm. oh fuck, I'm just back here again. <sighs> okay. Uh, Midori is gonna start preaching her ideology and um, is getting like picked up, like picked on by the other people. And mm-hmm. and part of her ideology in this is that like everyone should work together and like there should be no brutality or anything, and like we have to live in a peaceful state. No, you know. Uh, you know, no strong arming anyone to do anything. Uh, but she's getting, like, you know, bullied for her stupid ideas. And so Hick just beats up yeah. everyone who questions her until everyone agrees with her. And she's completely <laughs> unaware of the irony in this. She's like, yep, that makes mm-hmm, sense. Of course. We can li- We can only truly live in a peaceful, uh, loving society after we've killed everyone else who stands against us. Like in fucking fire, we, we see fire like behind her head, and her eyes begin to glow red, and she's just so angry. Yeah. And that's how we'll live in a peaceful society. Um, another idea I had was they rob a supply train, which only has the country's own currency, which is so incredibly inflated that it is entirely useless. People use it for toilet yeah. paper. Um, the entire train, like full to the brim with currency, was sent by one person trying to get a loaf of bread. Yeah. Sent by like a poor farmer. This is the only way that they could transport all of it. And so they're getting away with some of it, and Hick is driving um, as they're getting away, and everyone's like congratulating each other about how well they did and how, you know, they, you know, they did it. They got off with all the money, and they, you know, they, they didn't even, no one got hurt or anything. And as they're trying to speak, mm-hmm. Hick is like saying something, and no one understands him. Um, as, you know, as they're driving away and they're all talking, um, it, and no one can understand him. And he finally yells out, in like his first intelligible world word ever that he can't drive and this whole time they've been driving straight and he's just been holding the accelerator down and the first turn yeah. comes up and he drives them straight into the ocean <laughs> just immediately right into the water um another episode i had was that they all get captured um and the state guards start using phil's camera uh, and so we can never we mm-hmm. see everyone get tortured um victor enjoys it uh, Hick is intelligible only under high voltage. Um, Phil has a bag yeah. over his head because we're not allowed to see him. And he's in the same room with Xavier, who is desperately trying to charm the, the guards while also 
promising to give them whatever they want about anyone. Like, he'll tell them, tells them, like, his entire backstory, Everything. tells them every detail about all of his team yeah. members, like, immediately gives up. Um, Midori is, is fighting strongly and yelling at the, you know, the authoritarian communist pigs who argue, and they're like, well, actually, we're more like a state capitalist oligarchy with, like, a very stagnant senatorial form of government. Like, the, her guards are, like, mm -hmm. are kind of, like, you know, tear it apart her arguments a little bit like well not actually that like you're technically we're more like this yeah uh, you're just saying buzzwords i would love it if this episode was like set up more like um the office or parks and rec or something and we kind of like go around this like totalitarian you know regime's office and it's yeah. just kind of like it's an office day job sort of thing and then occasionally we well, they'll bring the camera down to the torture chamber and we'll see all of our main characters doing all this stuff. And then we go back upstairs and we worry about Kenny because he forgot to fill up the coffee machine this morning. Yeah, we, we can split it Oh, like that's that. going to be another be demerit. Like, we'll, we'll follow the the like the detectives or the interrogators as they go out and they like get coffee and they have like some mm -hmm. cake or something. And they're like, oh shit, we got to go back to yeah, these it, guys. It's Susan's birthday. Everybody signed the card, yeah. right? Like all that stuff. Yeah, like during stuff. the interrogation, they're like electrocuting uh, Midori with, and um, mm -hmm. like they're stabbing her over and over again and then somebody comes in and is like hey guys can you sign Susan's uh, get well soon card and you're like oh shit and so the, uh, well, the guy that's currently stabbing her hands it to the other dude so he can stab her as he signs the card and then they switch again so that he can mm -hmm. get it <laughs> something like that there you go thanks oh I got a little bit of blood on it is that fine yeah it's nah, fine it's, it's whatever it's charming you know she'll like that reminder of work yeah She's got a um, very dark sense of humor. So uh, the show, basically, where it's going is that eventually, uh, eventually, the revolution is going to work uh, in a um, in a way that almost doesn't not not really for our group because there's so Xavier is going to charm his way into the military commands, um, and he thinks mm -hmm. that he stages a coup. But in reality, it's very clear to the audience that there's a CIA-backed coup is why yeah. this this happens. Um, and it, but Xavier in his head, he thinks this is all him that's happened. Like, he, he prompted this all mm -hmm. to work. But it's very clear that the people he's that he's charming so to do this stuff to do were doing it anyway. And they were already going to, you know... He thinks he's prompted something, but mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's just delusional idiot. Mm -hmm. And in the last moments of the show, um, Xavier's going to be speaking with Phil. So Xavier throughout the show is going to be talking about like how he's excited for the documentary and he's trying to like look good. He always has like a little bit of makeup on or something like to, you know, because he yeah. thinks he's like the next, you know, he's going to be like the next big TV star from this. Uh, and he's asking, mm -hmm. he's asking Phil at the very end, like, so when's the premiere? Like, you know, what should I wear? You know, should I get a tux or something? Is this going to be in Hollywood? Like, should I book my tickets ahead of time? Like, should I, and where would I stay? Would you guys, would your studio be paying for the hotel room or should I get something? I mean, I'm not saying I don't have any money, but like, I'd appreciate it. Or like, you know, you know, I mean, I am the star of this yeah. thing after all, you know, I should be getting something out of this. And then that's where Phil is like, oh, I, I this is, this is just going on YouTube. And Xavier's yeah, like, this is an independent project. And it just project. ends with Xavier just Xavier and Phil, you know, watching the the government get toppled. And Xavier's just like, mm -hmm. oh. Huh. Oh. Pulls out a gun, cocks it, <laughs> screen cuts to black, gunshot. <laughs> End of show. Um, I did have an idea for a title. You did, okay. What do you got? Um, the revolution will be televised. How's Ooh. that? The revolution will be televised. I like that. Because that's a great song. We love that song. Is that a song? And the revolution... The revolution will not be televised. It's a song. It's about the civil rights movement. Um, and other stuff. And so, the revolution will be televised. Hoo-hoo. And obviously, I think the documentary inside... Like, inside the documentary, they should call it something else. You know? Yeah. It should, it should be like maybe I something think every really episode, overly dramatic, the and it just keeps getting longer oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. longer I like and that. longer. And by the end, it's like three cents. Each title episode, yeah. Each episode is a title, a potential title for the documentary. I like that too. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, but that is my all right. my fun uh, uh, mockumentary revolution TV show 
The revolution will be tev televised. The revolution will be televised. Uh, who are you playing? Who am I playing? Um, yeah. I would like to be a, a guard who either die, maybe the guard that gets killed by uh, killed by uh, Victor in the Victor beginning. at the very episode. beginning. I like that. Yeah, uh, I like that too. You, maybe you could be my you could I'll be my play... partner if you wanted to, and we could both get shot by Victor. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. I like that. I'm 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 all about that. Um, I think maybe it should be one of us gets shot and the other one falls over. Victor climbs out of the car, out of the trunk, and then walks Starts over it. the shit out of her, like crawling away. <laughs> yeah, begging for, for our lives, and then he just puts a bullet in our heads. Yeah. Uh, you know, either one of us. So, do you want to be first shot or second shot? Um, I, I want to be first shot because I feel like you'll be have you'll have better screams of agony for the <laughs> as you're getting <laughs> brutally murdered by Victor. Yeah, it's just I, I think it'd be better to instead of shot can't beat to death the second guy. Uh, yeah, just just beaten mm -hmm. out of bullets. Just takes the gun, you know, starts pistol whipping me into the ground. Just just a gurgling bloody mess. Yeah, it's like a single barrel yeah. shotgun that he fires the first shot with. So he just mashes your oh. head in with the uh, oh, with the butt of your the rifle brain is exploded, and, and then I just. Exactly, like the yellow man in fucking um, Sin City. And the whole time, the, the camera just is just puddle. looking at, like, the the rear view glass of the car. So, like, Phil's just filming backwards. Yeah. So we don't see anything except for, like, the sound of your screams and, like, the and like uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, he's Victor lifting, the lifting it up and down, up. up and down, and we just see the blood flying up over and over and over again. Yeah. And Xavier's Great. just continually Perfect. talking about, like, I swear I brought the papers, and, like, I mean, are you, you really don't speak <sighs> Russian? I swear, I thought, I thought I saw on your resume that you spoke Russian. Like, I can't believe that. Exactly, dude. And, and Phil's just like, I, everybody lies on those. Come on. <sighs> and, and, and Xavier, like, he's, like, fixing sucks. his teeth, maybe, in the mirror. He's like, ah, do I have something here? Like, I feel like I got, like, a, a spinach or something. Yeah, I've had broccoli in my teeth this whole time, and you didn't, you didn't say, say anything. anything. I mean, on camera. Oh, God, Jesus. Yeah. Victor, hop back in the trunk. We're doing a second take. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? I've, these two men are dead. <sighs> Fine, we'll do it. We'll fix it in post. Oh, that'd be great. Fine. That'd be hilarious, Whatever. actually, if he made him do a second take. He makes Victor get back yeah, in the trunk. Victor's covered in blood. You see, like, a, slot, like a, a, a totally dead guy hanging on top of the trunk and then Victor has to like pop open the trunk again shoot the already dead guy and then further mash in the very already brutalized guard this just me just barely alive oh. <laughs> just I'm sorry man it's just the squelching that's, that's sounds that's the movie of, business of the guts. dude oh, that's man. the movies that's terrible yeah I love it um alright I liked the revolution will be televised and if you liked it too, please remember uh, that we will be here every week. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I've been your host, Charles Long. With me, as always, been my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, gunner, navigator, orator, and podcasting associate, Jacob Gloth. If you like what you heard here and you want to hear more, please give us a like, a follow, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog, tell your cat. And remember, we'll be here next week. I'll have a TV show. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Haven't written it. Um, I kind of I, I used my one... Uh, my, the one I had in the bank uh, last week. So, who knows what it'll be oh, about maybe, next week? Maybe a space show about people exporting revolutionaries. Maybe a space show. That could be fun. You already came up with this this week, uh, so you don't have to come up with another idea if you want to do that. Exactly. I'll just you know what? Just take that like three minutes at the beginning of the episode and play that just on loop. Yeah. For next week's yep. episode, I'll, I'll do that for, for like fifty minutes. That's good. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Goodbye.